Hey everybody, Ochen Hyden here. I'm back to continue our War in the Pacific Tracker tutorial. So today, right now, we're going to go over something that I think is very important for new players, particularly Japanese players. I'm going to go over briefly the ship's data set, but then we're going to really get deep into ship production. And I'm going to explain how this thing works. And I'm going to give you a crash course in ship production. And I'm going to teach you how to use this to um, expedite your shipbuilding and get what you want maybe ahead of time from the way Japan really did it. So let's just briefly go over the ships tab first. So this data set shows you all the ships you have available in the game. Uh, not only what's currently active, but potentially what you're going to be getting later on. So you've for example, the, the carrier Junio is going to be here in 145 days. So this screen can show you all the ships that you have or are ever going to have. And it gives you detailed breakdown on everything that you need to know about them. So I like to run this in active mode because I only really care about the ships I have on the map right now. And you can sort it by class, by, well, Army or Navy. If you're playing as the Allies, you, you would have more options here. And you also have a way of breaking down the uh different some different information like cv info cargo capacity and fuel economy or just the raw stats for like aa anti-sub or torpedo i use this screen mostly to track my carrier fleets so if i click on cv cvl cve um, this is showing me all of the carriers i have on the map right now and this gives me a quick snapshot of what their system status is i can look at their system damage if they have any cargo on board which they normally don't um, and I can also see something very important here CV info this gives me a quick look at everything they've got going on as far as carrier works they have 90% of their plane capacity and you see there's tool tips for each each category how many sorties they have left to run and how many torpedoes they have on board so if I need to know the status of all my carriers right away, I can go to the ships tab, I click active, I sort by CVs, and I show the CV info, and I can determine if I need to start rotating my carriers back into port to rearm and refuel, maybe stock up on planes and pilots. So I like this screen for, for managing my carriers, but you can look at all of your ships. You can also look at your, your uh, battleships. If you want to know about your destroyers, all that stuff's available. And like a lot of the other uh, screens here, we have this little history tab. So if I want to look at the carrier Kaga, I can click history and it will show me a turn by turn breakdown of any damage it's taken, how many sorties it has left, uh, how much fuels are remaining, so on and so forth. So this is a really good screen. All kinds of options and look how much it breaks it breaks it down you can look at harbor defense motor yachts your amc's sub chasers and you can just see where and it even shows you where they're all at if they're in a task force or if they're located in a harbor and you can also sort by uh, if they're in a task force if they're just in port these are ships that are coming later and you can also see all of your sunken ships right so during our two turn campaign or three turn campaign that we've been playing we've lost a total of four ships and this will show you what sunk them and the date that they were lost so pretty cool actually no I take that back it doesn't show you what date they were lost but everything else is still good to know. So that's the ship data set. You can experiment with this as you like. But again, I find it most useful for keeping track of my carriers. So I usually run it just like this. Okay? So that's ship. Okay, so now we're going to look at the ship production data set. And I feel like this particular screen is one of the crown jewels of this entire program. This thing 
is critical for ship and fleet planning, uh, uh, expediting, halting, uh, figuring out how to manage your shipyards and ships that are coming online. So I'm, I want this tutorial series to be about this tracker program, but I can't not talk about ship production in this game without showing you this too. They go hand in hand. Um, so I'm going to be kind of referencing the manual, the game, and the tracker so you can get an idea of how ship production works and how you can use this tool to make it better for you. So in this game, there are two types of Navy uh, ship production. You have Navy shipyard production and merchant shipyard production. Navy shipyard production uh, deals with uh, surface warfare ships, the, the carriers, destroyers, uh, c cruisers, light cruisers, anything that's got a lot of gun armament, for example, pretty much is going to fall under the Navy shipyards. The merchant shipyards is going to be all of your um, uh, uh, cargo ships, the tankers, the replenishment ships, um, miscellaneous uh, uh, support vessels, also carrier escorts, like down here, the the CVEs are also built by merchant shipyards and the reason being is the majority of Japanese carrier escorts were converted uh, civilian ships so this game has the CVEs built by a merchant shipyard so the, each type of shipyard has points so Japan starts off with approximately 1385 Navy shipyard points um, and 807 merchant shipyard points if you do nothing as the Japanese player and you never go into your shipbuilding screen, the game will build every ship that Japan built during World War II at its historical date and time, and it will be ready at its historical date and time. And you'll get the ships at the same time that the Japanese got the ships, and that's it. Um, but as the Japanese player... And unlike the allied player, you have control over how your ships are produced. You can speed them up, stop them, um, or leave them normal. And this screen here helps you manage that and determine how to do it. So let's get right into it. When you look at this, I go, I sort this thing by one type of shipyard at a time. So I look at naval, I leave class to all. And I use the ID numbers and I just track stuff this way. So what this screen shows you here is the name of the ship, um, the delay until it's available to be launched and in service. And the delay also correlates to the, the uh, date that it's active, right? And this is the port that it's going to be active in. It shows you the current status and it's building also shows you when it when it is going to start building so if you see a negative number that implies that it started building 695 days ago ie before the start of the conflict okay if you see a date there that says start building further down that's telling you that's when it's going to start building if you see in this column can accelerate that means that you can theoretically start accelerating the production of this ship right now. If you see numbers down here that show you when you can start accelerating, that means that it cannot be accelerated yet because it won't be anywhere close to being ready to be built for some time. And that also correlates to the status of it called blueprint. Blueprint means still in the design phase, and that's it's not a ship that's even ready to be put on the slipway yet. If it says building, it's building. If it says queued, that means that it's past the blueprint phase and it is in line to be built at its historical date and time unless you elect to expedite its building time. So now that you understand what some of this stuff is here, I'm going to show you some other key numbers that you need to know. So to build these ships, they require shipbuilding points. So if you look up here, these are all Navy yard ships. We currently produce 1,384 
shipyard points per turn. That's assuming we don't modify or uh, change that in the game, which you can do as a Japanese player in your industry tab. You can increase the size of your shipyards, okay? So right now, we are maxed out. We're building everything we can. And if you notice here, next turn, we're going to have basically no points left in our pool because we're using every single available point of shipbuilding to build the ships that are currently indicating status of building. And these are, and when the game launches, these ships are building at the historical date and time. Um, what determines how many points a ship takes to be built is its durability rating over here. And I'm going to briefly refer you to the manual. This is a section of the manual that talks about ship construction. So keep an eye on this. It's 13.4 and then 13.4.1. And that talks about how the Japanese player can have control over their shipbuilding process and how you can accelerate the shipbuilding process. And if you look here, there's a mathematical equation that determines when you can accelerate and what it costs to do it. So basically, when you elect to accelerate the building of a ship, it costs three times its durability rating to do so. And you guys can look at this some more and calculate times and when a ship becomes available if you want. I'm not going to get into that. But what's important to know is that it takes three times the dur durability rating of the ship in shipbuilding points to accelerate it. Okay, so let's go back to the tracker and let's take a look at the CV Junio. Currently, it's expected to be in service at 3 May 42. All right, and that's fine. But what if we want to speed it up? Well, the cool thing about this tracker is it has this feature over here, which is called calculated build rate. And it allows you to do some what if scenarios over here to see how it's going to affect your building. Okay. But before we get into that, I want to show you this over here. So these are build points on the left hand side is the amount of points that each ship is taking right now. And on the right hand side is the aggregate. So for example, we have both the Junio and the Hio building currently. They both have a durability of 84. So each one is taking 84 points. So you see right here, 84 of 84. Now the second ship in the line is 84 of 168. That's the total. And now the Taiho is building at 103 points per turn. So now we're up to 271. So if you follow down this column right here, this is showing you the ships that are being built currently, how many points they're taking out of the total amount of points that are allocated. So if we keep scrolling down, we see we got some sub chasers being built. Those take just a couple points because they have small durability, but we're adding up, right? Now, when we get down to this submarine here, I-176, we are now out 1385 because that's our total amount of points that we have to spend. We don't have any more than that. Okay, so right now we're down to this line over here. This is as far down as our shipbuilding is going. And as of this moment, on the calculation side, it, it matches everything on the actual building side because we haven't done anything. So what this thing over here on the right allows you to do is some what-if scenarios to determine what happens if I want to accelerate. So, for example, let's take a look at the Junio. Let's say we really got to have this ship. I want this ship right now. Okay, I want it as soon as possible because we got to get it in service. So if I click here under this calculated thing, I can click accelerated. Now, if you see what happens here, it shows us that the amount of building points we're taking triples. All right. And if you look to the right, the aggregate number now just shot up on the right-hand side as compared to the left-hand side because we've tripled the amount of points we're, du we're dumping into this ship to get it done. All right. Now, this whole side over here allows us to scroll down and see what the follow-on effects will be if we do that. Because keep in mind, we only have 1,385 points as it sits right now. We don't have more than that. So we're going to scroll down on the calculation side and see what the effects will be to other ships that are being built. So we got some sub chasers here, same. Now you check this out. We get into these subs over here and they switch from building to pending because we no longer have the points that they take every turn to build them. All right. 
scroll down, same down here. It's no longer building as it would be on the left. You see the difference? Because we've stolen the points from our finite amount of shipyard points, and we've shifted them up to the Junio. Now, if you want to see how much faster that's going to get your ship, check this out. You highlight the line that you want, and then you click on this little button down here called HI cost. All right. This shows you what it would normally be at 3 May 1942. And over here on the accelerated side, it shows you what your new arrival time is. So basically, we're cutting the building time in half, but we're spending three times the amount of points to do it as we would normally. So the total cost for building this ship, if we were leaving it in normal mode, would be 12,180 12, shipbuilding points and 36,000 heavy industry. Because we're accelerating it, we've now increased the cost to do it. It's not exactly three times because we're also shaving off times. So we have half as many days, but we're spending three times as many points per day to build the ship. So this gives you a forecast of what it would look like if you accelerate it. All right. But let's say we want to accelerate this ship, but we're not happy that we're stopping production on these subs. We want our subs too, right? Well, you can't have your cake and eat it too because that's you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Unless you're going into your industry and spending supply points and increasing your total shipyard production every turn, which also takes time. It's not something that's going to happen right away. You're going to need to find these points somewhere else. You can't have it both ways. So let's look at this. We have the CV Shinano, carrier Shinano. And the Shinano is a conversion of a Yamato class battleship into a carrier. Now, historically, that ship didn't do too well. It got sunk on its maiden voyage out of town. And it's not a particularly great carrier. So let's just say we don't want to build the Shinano anymore. So what we can do over here is we can theoretically halt the construction, right? Now look what happens when we do that. We now take away 157 shipbuilding points. Our aggregate goes down here. So now we've just pocketed 157 points per turn. And we can scroll down here and see what effects that have on our building. Now we've got all those subs building again. And the only thing that we're forsaking to do this is this I-176. So it's going to have to wait longer until some other ships get done. But... We took all those points by halting the Shinano and we put them into here, right? Now we can go a little further. Let's say we're looking at our overall shipbuilding strategy and we're deciding that the Yamato and the Musashi are not really good ideas because we know what happened to those historically as well, right? They got destroyed by carrier aviation. Maybe we don't even want to bother with it because these ships are incredibly expensive. Let me show you something. If I click on the fuel and cargo efficiency tab here, it takes us 31 tons of fuel per hex to move these ships. That's very expensive. Come 1944, 1945, Japan's probably not going to have the fuel to do this anyway. So maybe we can just, you know, skip a step and just stop building these ships. They may not be that useful. So now we can go over here and theoretically halt the Yamato. Yamato, and the Musashi. Now we've just pocketed 233 points per turn per ship. Now if you come up here, if you look at our calculation difference, um, we are now pocketing 456 points per turn by stopping these two ships. That's a lot of points. So we're now fully back into green. All the ships that are scheduled to start building are back to being built. But now we have so many extra points, now we can look at something else we want. Maybe we want to speed up the Taiho, right? Because that's not a bad ship. So now we go and we accelerate the Taiho. And when we do that, we can click on HI cost. And we now have saved over a year of construction time on the Taiho. So instead of waiting till March of 1944, by accelerating the Taiho, we can now get it in early 1943. Right, We did that because we have stopped the Yamato and the Musashi, as well as the Shinano. We've pocketed all those naval shipyard points, and we have used them and invested them into expediting other ships that we want. 
and we still have extra points left over so we can even go down and say well maybe I do want the Shinano now so I'll just turn that back on okay so now this is back to building but because we halted these two highly expensive ships we're still gonna run a, a, um, a surplus of shipbuilding points every turn so I hope you guys are understanding how this this ship production tab works it helps you plan out how you want to build your ships uh, let's say here um, CV Unrio right it's not supposed to even start building for another 361 days but let's say we want to get that thing going faster right we can actually start building it now and accelerate it and you can go back to the manual and it talks about the rules of how to accelerate basically um, if you're really far out from a ship's delay time it only takes the cost of the durability times one but as you get closer to when it's supposed to start then it turns into that three times again again take a look at the manual for a better explanation but let's see what happens when we accelerate the Unrio okay so we we are calculating what happens if we accelerate it when it's not even supposed to start building for quite a while by accelerating it we are getting this ship in service a, a year and a few months faster than we normally would have so that may be a good idea if it's your intention to have these ships in action much sooner so that's basically how this screen works that's how ship production works and this thing basically allows you to game plan out how you want to build your ships and what the effects are of starting one early halting one or accelerating one will be and now the trickle down effects of doing that on the rest of your ship production okay and this is every possible ship that can be built by the Japanese you'll notice that a lot of these are halted uh, they're halted because they were halted in reality and if you want to turn them on you can but they're way further down okay so basically the merchant shipyard works in the same exact way um, right now if you'll notice that the merchant shipyard is being underutilized it has 807 available points and we're only using per turn right now about half of those so we actually have some spare capacity here so this this C the Unio and the Chuyo if we want to get these out faster we probably could do that so we can go over here to calculate and hit accelerate accelerate so now that shows us that our points needed per turn goes up to 648 but we're still running a surplus of 159 points per turn so that means we could probably go down and accelerate some other stuff but let's take a look at the Unio right so that's cutting off 50% of the build time so instead of us getting the ship in May of 42 we now get it in March of 1942 three months two or three months sooner so this is how you can determine how fast you want to build stuff and what its effects will be downstream okay so again you have merchant shipyard and naval shipyard or if you want a big cluster you can just do them both in the same time but I get a little confused because they use two different types of calculations right one uses um, naval shipyard point and the other one uses merchant shipyard point and these aggregates kind of go back and forth and get a little confusing if you're not paying attention to what type of ship it is right merchant or Navy so I recommend if you're gonna do this you do this one at a time so that's basically how the ship production screen works and how you can use this calculator over here to determine how to build ships so briefly I'm gonna fire up the, the game here and where you actually make the changes to your ship production time is going to be under the intelligence tab and then you're going to click ship availability so how I do this is I sort it by ETA and then I start looking for the type of ship that I want so we were talking about the uh, what was the ship we were talking about it was the Unrio right the tracker doesn't make any changes to the game 
that whole calculation thing I was showing you was a what if thing. You have to actually go into the game and make those changes. So right now we're looking at the oh, it wasn't the uh, Unrio, it was the Junio, okay? Because that that looks right. So right now this thing shows you that we're building at a normal rate and it's taking 84 shipyard points per turn to do it. If you want to change it, you you click it. Okay. Now, next turn when this updates, it will show that number being three times what it is right now. And that will that should change the ETA next turn when it recalculates when it will be ready. But if it doesn't, I, I don't recall if it does or not. If it doesn't, you can just go back to your tracker and take a look at it that way. Use an HI cost button to determine when the ship will be ready. And there you go. And if you want to go back to normal, you just click it again. If you want to halt it, you click it till it says halted. So now we've halted construction of the Junio and we're going to pocket 84 points per turn. And then those points can be reinvested into other ships that we want to, to accelerate. Now, let's take a look at some battleships. We've got these two building right now, right? Didn't we say we didn't want to build the, the Yamato and the Musashi? Okay, no problem. We'll just halt them. Now we're pocketing 466 shipbuilding points. So this is where you go in the game to actually make changes, but you're going to want to use the tracker to calculate it and see what it's going to look like before you do it. Or else you're going to screw up a lot of stuff and ships aren't going to be coming out when you think they are and you're going to burn through points that you don't want to burn through. So I highly recommend you use this for figuring out your ship production goals and plans. So that's basically it for this data set. Uh, this is a very important part of the game. And I think this is one of the strongest tools that you have in the tracker as a Japanese player, particularly to figure out your plan for building. There's also this little optimum button down here. I not entirely sure how this thing works. I don't see it updating. Uh, but then again, I, I've never really looked at this too much. So if this particular graphic is something you're interested in, um, let me know and I'll dig into it more and see if I can figure out how it works. Maybe I'll run a few more turns with some uh, changes in game on accelerating or halting ships to see if these numbers up here change and change this graph. Because it goes basically by turns. So turn zero, turn 1600 which is more or less the uh, end of the game so we can talk about this if you guys want leave a comment if you care about this graphic I don't really use it I don't see the need I definitely use this button because it's very important for me to know what kind of time savings I'll get when I make these changes so I think that's all I can say about ship production I'm gonna end this video now because it was very long but I hopefully you found this useful if you have any questions on how to use this thing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, come to my Discord, ask some questions, and I'll go into it in more detail. All right. Um, when we come back on the next video, I think we can blow through the rest of these pretty quick. Because there's not too much to talk about in all of these last data sets. This ship production one, I think, is probably the biggest... A topic to discuss before we run through the last of them. So thank you for your patience and I hope you're finding this useful and we will see you soon.